Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, Prep 2. How are you today? Today we are going to talk about graduation of properties of elements in the modern periodic table. But first, let's remember the last lesson in which we were talking about periodic table and the elements of and the attempts of elements classification. And we talked about the three main the three main attempts of classification of elements. Then we talked about how to locate the location of an element in the modern periodic table. Today we are going to talk about some properties of elements. The first one is the atomic size. Atomic size is the size of an atom. And atomic radius is used as a measure for atomic size. As it is very small, it is measured in picometer unit, which equals 10 power minus 12 meter. As we can observe in the following figure, I'm going from the left side of the in period, I'm going from the left side to the right side, we observe that atomic size decreases, okay? Comparing each element with the previous one, we will observe that its atomic size decreases. That's why, because I'm going from the left side to the right side in the modern periodic table in period, each element increases, then the previous one with one proton, which increases the positive charge of the nucleus, okay, with increasing also the negative charge of electrons which revolve around the nucleus. This increases the attraction force between the positive protons inside the nucleus and the negative electrons that revolve around the nucleus okay so in period atomic size decreases by increasing atomic number but it is different in case of group as we can observe in group on going from up to down we observe that we observe that atomic size decreases okay we observe that atomic size increases sorry okay it is it increases that's why because on going from up to down in group, each element increases than the previous one with an energy with an energy level. So the atomic size increases. So we can conclude from all that that cesium, which is located at the bottom of the periodic table, has the largest atomic size, and fluorine, which is located at the top of group 7A, has the smallest atomic size okay the second property that we are going to study is electronegativity electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the electrons of bond towards it as we can observe in the following figure which represents water molecule that consists of one atom of oxygen okay combined with two hydrogen atoms Okay, in this compound, oxygen shares with two electrons, while each atom of hydrogen shares with only one electron. But we can observe in the following figure that the two electrons of bond are polarized, or they are more close to oxygen atom. That's why, because the ability of atom of oxygen atom to attract the electrons of bond towards it is higher, so it has high electronegativity okay there is an important note that the difference in electronegativity if it is more than 1.7 it produces or gives ionic bond while if it is less than 1.7 it gives us a covalent bond okay some types of covalent compounds or compounds that have covalent bond are called polar compounds so, polar compounds are covalent compounds in which the difference in electronegativity between their elements is relatively high, as we observe it in water molecule. So, the difference in the value of electronegativity gives us two types of compounds in case of covalent bond, which are polar compounds and non-polar compounds. Polar compounds, they are covalent compounds in which the difference in electronegativity between their elements is relatively high, like water and ammonia. We can observe 
in case of water that it consists of one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen the electronegativity of oxygen is higher than the electronegativity of hydrogen and the difference between them is relatively high so it is polar compound also in case of ammonia molecule the difference in electronegativity values between nitrogen and hydrogen is relatively high but in case of methane gas the difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is relatively low so it is said to be nonpolar compound The third property we are going to talk about is metallic and non-metallic property. As we have studied before, that metals are elements which have metallic luster. They are good conductor of electricity and heat. They have high melting point and high boiling point. They are ductile, they are malleable, and they have metallic luster. But non-metals, bad conductors of heat and electricity, except carbon is good conductor of electricity. They have no metallic luster, they have low melting point, have low boiling point, they are not ductile, they are non malleable okay? But today we are going to continue these properties, okay? Metals, they, they have only one electron, two or three electrons in the outermost energy level. And during chemical reactions, they tend to lose these electrons to be similar to the previous inner gas and the modern periodic table to be more stable okay while non-metals have more than four electrons in the in the outermost energy level okay so they have five six or seven electrons and see they tend to complete their outermost energy level with eight electrons to be more stable okay by gaining some electrons okay metals are located on the left side of the modern periodic table okay while non metals are located in the left and the right side of the modern periodic table okay during chemical reaction as we said that metals tend to lose their outermost energy level electrons and it change into a positive ion. So positive ion is, a, is an atom of a metallic element which lost which lost one electron or more during the chemical reaction. So it carries positive charge equal to the number of electrons lost during the chemical the chemical reaction. And the number of protons will be more than that of electrons which were lost. Okay? As it lost the number of electrons found in the outermost energy level okay while in case of non-metals we'll observe that they turn into negative ion or it change into negative ion as they gain some electrons during the chemical reaction to complete their outermost energy level okay so it they carries negative charge that is equal to the number of gained electrons and the number of protons will be less than that of electrons and these are some examples here's an example of sodium atom which has only one electron in the outermost energy level after losing it it has us it has eight electrons in the outermost so it is completely filled with eight electrons in the outermost energy level and it is completely stable while in case of chlorine it has seven electrons so it needs only one electron to complete its outermost energy level with eight electrons. Metals or elements, when they react with oxygen, they form some compounds which are called oxides. These oxides are classified into metal oxides and non-metal oxides. When the metal reacts with oxygen, it's said to be metal oxides. While when non-metals react with oxygen it's said to be non-metal oxide as we can observe in the following figure that calcium zinc barium when they react with oxygen they form oxides okay while non-metals like carbon sulfur and nitrogen when they react with oxygen they form non-metal oxide 
chemical properties of metals. Metals are arranged according to their activity, chemical activity during chemical reaction in a series called chemical activity series. So chemical activity series is a series in which elements are arranged in a descending metals are arranged in a descending order, okay, according to their chemical activity. We can observe that potassium is located at the top of the chemical activity series, which means that it is more active than sodium, which is more active than calcium, which is more active than magnesium, and so on. Okay, that's all about our lesson today, and I hope to meet you in the next video. Thank you.